Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Joe Brand. In the news this week, on his extended leave from government, hapless cabinet secretary, Simon Case, does some volunteering at his local hospital. <laughs> <laughs> On a visit to a scout camp in Yorkshire, there's an awkward moment as one visitor asks if this is how all northern people cook their food. <laughs> 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 And in Old Windsor, a power-mad local official authorises the demolition of Prince Andrew's rented cottage. On Ian's team tonight is a comedian whose first job was working in a jam factory, a place where all the employees loved their work, unlike the Marmite factory next door, <laughs> where it was more sort of 50-50. <laughs> Will you please welcome Zoe Lyons? <laughs> and on Paul's team tonight is a former punk rocker with the undertones and now campaigner against pollution in Britain's rivers, who spends a lot of his spare time fly fishing. In fact, last week he caught a massive 16-pounder. Unfortunately, it wasn't a fish. Uh, will you please welcome Fergal Sharkey? Thank you. So, we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Fergal, uh, have a look at this. Ah, uh, yes, this is the man that used to be Prime Minister, and uh, <laughs> that's the man who wanted to be Prime Minister. <laughs> This is the COVID inquiry. When the C word was dropped, he was on screen appropriately. Um, <laughs> Dominic Cummins has given evidence, talking about what an absolute uh, mess the whole government approach to COVID was, worse than people even realised at the time. An absolute disaster. This is the shocking revelation that the government was rubbish. <laughs> Who knew? We certainly had no idea. <laughs> There's actually more sewage in number 10 than there is currently in our rivers. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is so true. Here's the top dog lawyer at the inquiry who asked us all the questions. Yes. He's called Keith. Yeah. <laughs> now, Keith the barrister was getting some uh, easy laughs from reading out swear words in a posh voice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We'd never stoop to such a thing, would we? No. No. This was going at 11.30 in the morning on, <laughs> on the BBC News Channel. I've never seen so many expletives on daytime television. You're about to hear some more. <laughs> you can tell me, what is Jaws Mode Wank? <laughs> Jaws mode wank is when you wank so much you're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's film reference. Thank you. <laughs> this is what Cummings said that um, Boris Johnson, if he's not, you know, efficiently policed, he just spouts rubbish. And the Jaws reference is Boris thought that the hero of Jaws uh, was the mayor who keeps the beach open. Yes. <laughs> But he was quite relaxed about old people. He just sort of said they should just, you know, they've come to the end of their lives, they might as well just die. Yeah. And then the others had to point out, they vote for you. <laughs> but watching Cumming give evidence, it's terrible, because Cummings has learnt absolutely nothing. He's equally arrogant. And then he starts calling other people liars. And you think, you're the man who gave us the story about having your eyesight tested. <laughs> <laughs> in a car when you were breaking the rules. He still doesn't admit he was breaking the rules. Oh. I just thought, I don't care if I agree with everything else you say, you're a liar. Mm. I mean, I must admit, you're right. <laughs> if this government goes on much longer, I wouldn't actually mind dying that much. <laughs> 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 when he was giving evidence, I don't know what a body language expert would say, but he kept his hand in front of his mouth most of the time. I think probably even later he'll try and deny it was him talking. <laughs> <laughs> When he first was um, in the middle of the COVID thing, um, Paul asked at one point, why on earth is this man, who's entirely unelected, dictating policy on vaccines, mm. or indeed on lockdown, or anything else? It beggars belief that he could sit there writing WhatsApp message saying, let's get rid of Matt Hancock, let's sack the head of the NHS, let's sack everybody. 
Says who? But in your current you... guise of a 1950s East End gangster... <laughs> <laughs> do you think you should pay him a visit? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to go round and give him an eyesight test. <laughs> <laughs> Now, brace yourselves. Uh, yeah. What about fuck pig, moron, and cunt? <laughs> Terrible firm of solicitors. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever one you get, you wish you spoke to the other. <laughs> when I saw that, I thought fuck pig did greetings cards. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, those lovely words were Cummings' assessment of the various talents in the Cabinet, and it gave newsreaders at Sky, who were covering the proceedings live, a bit of a challenge. You called ministers useless fuckpigs, morons, cunts, <laughs> in emails and WhatsApps to your professional colleagues. And apologies from us for those who may be offended by the language <laughs> and the COVID-19 we have no control over it. So, does anyone know what Helen McNamara said about the decision to allow football to continue at the beginning of the pandemic? Her complaint was there are no women, so that no. all the discussions are about should we allow football, should we have hunting, should we allow shooting, what should we do? And then there's someone in the background saying, schools. Schools. Their <laughs> <laughs> homes. Face masks that actually fit women properly. She also said that there wasn't one day in Downing Street when the rules were observed. Yeah, absolutely. Which means that everything Boris Johnson said in his various witness statements isn't true. Mm. Can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it and I thought, this is a bombshell revelation here. <laughs> what indication of his indecisiveness did Cummings provide in his written statement to the inquiry? Calling him a trolley? Uh, it wasn't. It was the fact that Boris Johnson had circulated a video on oh. a WhatsApp oh, yes. group oh, of yeah. a possible method of killing the coronavirus before it got to the lungs. <laughs> it's a video of a Florida County Council meeting where one of the commissioners suggests this. Keep an eye on the man on the left. This is sounds really goofy and it did to me too, but it works. Once the temperature reaches 136 degrees Fahrenheit, the virus falls apart and just it disintegrates, OK? And I said, well, how would you get the temperature up to 132 degrees? The answer was you use a blow dryer because it's capable of doing that. So you hold a blow dryer in front of your face and you inhale. <laughs> with your nose and it kills all the viruses in your nose. <laughs> Boris Johnson was shoving a blow dryer up his nose. It explains why he had that superb <laughs> bouffant for all of those years. There's been suggestions that the government was hampered from helping vulnerable people by the lack of diversity in Downing Street. Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look at some typical Downing Street <laughs> workers, shall we? <laughs> wow. That's on nerve. That's that a very that. diverse range of bulbous foreheads, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> They're all here to take over our planet. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Hancock we saw on the end there. Yes. He, he came in for quite a bit of stick, not just at the inquiry, but on Channel 4's SAS thing. Um, would you like to see a bit of it? Yes, oh, please. Yes. yes, please. Put these off. The final recruit in for processing is number one, Matt. Oh, dear. Can you see me? No. Why can't you see me? Because I've still got a bag on my head. So I told you to take these things off. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant just those. <laughs> <laughs> now, Zoe, you were on the same series, weren't you? Did you get off with him? Oh, you know I did. <laughs> <laughs> Was he a weasel face country club? <laughs> <laughs> I went into that show with an open mind because I thought, you know, I'll take people as I see them. You know, I will go in with an open mind, and within 30 seconds, my mind had sh <laughs> shut scallop. <laughs> Again, like a startled scallop. He volunteered, didn't he, to be the person that said whether people should live or die? Yeah. The hospitals are too crowded. Let me, I'll do that. I can do that. Yeah. I mean, they said, should it be chief medical officer or should it be, you know, decided <laughs> by the public? Should... No, no, no. He said, I'll do that. Yeah. Me, Matt. Now, what's <laughs> happened to Matt Hancock's intimate cubby hole? Oh, wow. Ooh, <coughs> I did see that once in the shed in Vietnam. <laughs> this programme was in Vietnam? 
I'll be honest, I thought I'd applied for a place in the sun. It was a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> the Mickey cupboard, where he was filmed grappling with a woman who wasn't his wife, has been demolished, like uh, Fred West's house, apparently. <laughs> um... <laughs> now... <laughs> Where might Nigel Farage be spending the winter? Oh. Australia. I'm a celebrity, kept me out of here. <laughs> Sorry, that's the name of the programme, not my current way of thinking. <laughs> ITV bosses offered him an eye-watering sum of money. I'm guessing cash in case he loses his bank account. <laughs> <laughs> um, Farage has admitted the discussion, saying, I'm used to going through tough times and dealing with snakes. The difference between talking bollocks and eating bollocks, though, isn't it? So... <laughs> I think with Farage in the jungle and Boris not starting till January, we'll just have to savour moments like this one while we can. <laughs> it's time for Bell and Spurly! <laughs> Of the air. It's cancel culture, it's just not fair. Why, why, why deny us? GB News is not bias. Jed would have let themselves go. <laughs> 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 So there we go. This is the COVID inquiry whose principal aim is that lessons will be learned. The main lesson being make sure you delete your WhatsApp messages. <laughs> According to The Independent, the inquiry has produced a series of startling new revelations. Boris Johnson was considered unfit to govern, the cabinet was bitterly divided, and Dominic Cummings hated everyone. And there was also a series of startling new revelations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ian and Zoe, take a look at this. Uh, that's the march in London. Oh, yeah, this is the war in the Labour Party. <laughs> and this is us trying to... Work <laughs> out how we're going to... Answer this question. This. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> This is Keir Starmer toing and froing with his point of view on the current Gaza uh, Israel situation. Indeed. And the problem is, he doesn't want to say there's a ceasefire because, according to Israel, that means the end of the war. And the US president says, Can we have a pause? And the UN says, Can we have a ceasefire? So it's the difference between having a pause where you stop firing and a ceasefire where you cease firing. Um, <laughs> Joe Biden said we need a pause as well. Yeah. So uh, that might have been because he was halfway up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> the views on this, they're very difficult to articulate without annoying everybody, which <laughs> I'm sure I've just done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is Keir Starmer's argument against a ceasefire? Well, he says if there's a ceasefire, we'll stay in a static situation, therefore allowing... Hamas to... Uh, to sort of regroup. And, to regroup. Yeah. But the others are saying that doesn't necessarily mean that. The pause is to negotiate further with the hostages and to try and get some aid into Gaza. And I think the argument for him is he doesn't want to be Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. Um, you know, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, <laughs> and he wants to keep a party together that doesn't lose. Well, his speech was supposed to calm uh, tensions in his own party. He got heckled on the way out, and mm. here, here are some of the protesters who were waiting for him. Starmer's ham, not sure that'll go down <laughs> well. Really, really bold. Who else has been criticised in relation to the Hamas attacks? Well, Hamas. Hamas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is probably a good thing. Iran for backing them. It's actually South Yorkshire's AXB paramotoring group who upset a local woman, and this led to the headline. Woman criticises paragliding club who made her think Hamas were invading <laughs> Gaza. <laughs> wow. <laughs> who is the BBC upset with their news coverage? Oh, sorry, we simply don't have time to get through Everybody? this that long. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> now, the good news is that the BBC Director General, Tim Davey, has taken direct control of editorial complaints. So if you don't like anything you've seen in today's programme, then drop Tim a line. I'm sure I know he'll be delighted to hear from you. <laughs> and his email is calltimbo <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> What's the good news for Rishi Sunak? It's not a trick question, there actually is a glimmer. Has he finally got a pair of trousers that fit him properly? Because <laughs> <laughs> winter's coming and his ankles will be cold. <laughs>
<laughs> According to The Guardian, a split over Gaza could see Labour hemorrhage crucial left-wing votes to obscure fringe political parties like George Galloway's Workers' Party of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> or even more shockingly, the Lib Dems. <laughs> <laughs> Fergal, you grew up in Derry. Is partition a good idea, in your opinion? Uh, well, this is the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. For 25 years, the people of Northern Ireland have been able to prosper and grow and blossom and have discovered that this thing, peace, is a very delicate, beautiful little flower that needs nurturing, caressing and supporting. I do wish that the people of Gaza and Palestine and Israel get to discover what 25 years of peace, prosperity and diplomacy and democracy looks like and that those people can blossom into a much more confident, much brighter future for everyone involved. This is good for Northern Ireland. Well, they were spoken. Thank you. So this is the conflict in Gaza and the, let's be honest, slightly less important conflict in the Labour Party. London Mayor Sadiq Khan has called for a ceasefire to prevent tanks rolling into the Gaza Strip. And if that doesn't stop them, he's going to declare Gaza a ULEZ zone. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Uh, fingers on buzzers teams if you know the answer. <laughs> this is a story that I saw the other day. It's that apparently somebody has determined that cats have over a hundred different expressions. I would like to see <laughs> each one of those hundred different expressions. I mean, that one's obviously enjoying a visit to the vets. <laughs> um, yeah, they have 270. No, they if... don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> I every every cat, cat looks like one. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do they count? I don't know, Paul. <laughs> no, no. 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 How do researchers find this out? Well, this is what we're asking you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, number one, nostalgic. Second, patriotic. <laughs> Three, slightly disappointed. There's no fish for breakfast. <laughs> Four, watching GB News. <laughs> Five, presenting GB News. <laughs> No viewers! <laughs> Not even one! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a study involving 53 cats in the Los Angeles cafe. Oh, well, that's an exhaustive oh. study. No, absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's just try and see if we can guess any of these cats' emotions. Right. Yes, let's yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, number one. Yeah. <laughs> That's not where it should be. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I miss the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's friendly because it's got its ears turned slightly down. Apparently. Oh, right, OK. All right, the next mm. one. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's Therese Coffee saying, tonight, Larry the Cat, this is your life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the news that cats have many more facial expressions than previously realised. No, they don't. <laughs> 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 Prove that. Cats have 276 facial expressions, 276 of which are fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> have we got Dominic Cummings in? Yeah. <laughs> I always wonder what the last episode of this show would look like. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, team. Ah. <laughs> oh, God, that robot's at a really odd height. Um... <laughs> <laughs> is this the AI conference? Yes, it is. Yes. I mean, I've been worried about this for quite some time, cos about seven years ago I bought a toaster. <laughs> and uh, when I got out of the box, I realised it had seven settings, and I thought, crikey, that's probably more emotionally intelligent than I'll ever be. So... <laughs> this is the news that Rishi Sunak is hosting a summit about artificial intelligence. Who opened the summit? Was it Elon Musk? He was there, but it was opened by someone on video who... Is it Christopher Biggins? <laughs> <laughs> King Charles. That's right. Um, appeared in a video message saying that the world leaders must address the risk of AI in the same way they sought to tackle climate change. 
with that level of urgency. Yes, <coughs> so ignore it then, basically. <laughs> and you've already said the answer to this, Ian. Who was the big name attending the summit? Christopher Biggins. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk. Yes. He's yes. turned up. I mean, again, why? I mean, he, he owns Twitter. X, Ian, keep up. X. X, oh, yes. Ian's very big on MySpace. I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Sunak is keen to show that he has the ear of all the biggest names in AI, but whose expertise should he really be tapping into? It is Christopher Biggins, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that far off. It's Cliff Richard. Um, because... <laughs> During an interview with the BBC, yes. no one mentioned helicopters. He showed <laughs> that he really has a firm grasp of modern technology. Here we go. Sitting down there with my lungs strumming, I could see the people for miles around coming to hear me sing my music and play. Yay, yay. Delightful. <laughs> thank you, Cliff. Okay, thank you. <laughs> really nice chatting. Thank you. And I didn't use artificial insemination. <laughs> This is the Bletchley Park Summit on the implications of artificial intelligence and its possible threat to the human race. This problem is overhyped and AI is nothing to worry about, said an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Vladimir Putin, Jeremy Corbyn, King George IV and Taylor Swift. Do George IV's eyes keep dropping out and landing on his cloak? <laughs> None of them are involved with Taylor Swift, if I missed the news. <laughs> During lockdown, I was in Battersea Park and I went and had a cup of tea. What were you um, doing about you and your stories? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a paparazzi and he, he was taking pictures. And I said, what are you doing here? This is a bit desperate. And he said, I was sent out to find Taylor Swift. <laughs> 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 Putin's the odd one out. Is the only one trying to look down her top? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's yeah. something that a lot of people do on a night out after they've come out of the pub. Buy a kebab? Well, George IV never bought a kebab, did he? <laughs> oh, unless he invented them. Yeah. Something you do late night after you come out to the pub. You go home and finish the crossword. No. <laughs> So it's all about kebabs, yes. All the others love a kebab, apart from Jeremy Corbyn, who's vegetarian, but loves his local kebab shop. This is what he told the crowd at the British Kebab Awards. <laughs> I love having a falafel wrap. Now, no surprise, Jeremy Corbyn likes Middle Eastern food. He's always been a big defender of hummus. Um, <laughs> <let's>... <laughs> so how do we know that Taylor Swift is a kebab fan? She was spotted in Hampstead. Eating a kebab? At the kebab shop. Yeah. Well, it's in Kentish Town. You mean that she gets her kebabs from Kentish Delight? <laughs> She's been once, at the very least, yeah. <laughs> I should think most people have been once. <laughs> 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 and according to The Telegraph, politicians from Chile, Hungary, Thailand and Canada have begged Taylor Swift to bring her tour to their countries as it would give their economy a multi-billion dollar boost. Yeah, someone's done research into this. I think I, I read this and your economy grows by a, an enormous percentage. Buying t-shirts and tickets and, to, tickets and, and merch and... Merch? God, where have you come by this phrase, merch? <laughs> <laughs> It comes from the biblical narrative. There's gold, frankincense and myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> How does Vladimir Putin use kebabs to relax? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, according yeah. to a local leader in Siberia, he unwinds by making a Russian type of kebab called shashlik. Vladimir Putin's favourite sandwich comprises kebab, gherkins and barbecue sauce, otherwise known as the KGB. <laughs> um, <laughs> a major academic study into the menu served to Georgian kings has revealed they often feasted on foreign cuisine, including Turkish kebab. Ah, mm. The uh, <laughs> Times reported that at this time the royals could also eat an early version of chicken and chips. Oh. So, egg and chips. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Very good. <laughs>
We know that George III and George IV used to enjoy kebabs due to the tradition of recording every single meal ever eaten by royals in palace ledgers. Well. And still Andrew can't find that receipt for Pizza Express. <laughs> 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 OK, it's time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Allotment and Leisure Gardener. <laughs> and we start with Thieving Cat Blamed for What? Thieving Cat Blamed for Looking Guilty and Creating Facial Expression Number 251. <laughs> <laughs> Thieving Cat blamed for 18 years of unpaid gas bills. <laughs> According to the Mirror, Postman had complained about the cat shredding letters with its claws. Here's the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, look what it's done to his hair. <laughs> <laughs> what discovered propping open shed door? Copies of Matt Hancock's memoirs. <laughs> <laughs> Brick. Brick. No, you were in the right ballpark now with... Bricks. It. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a £2.5 million marble sculpture. Oh, oh right. wow. yes. Yes. Yeah. And here's the statue they found in a shed in the Highlands. And there was even better news when they went into the living room and found its legs being used as a draft excluder. <laughs> Finally, South West representative of the National Allotment Society says he couldn't live what? South West representative National Allotment says he couldn't live in the South East. <laughs> <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to tell you. South West representative of the National Allotment Society says he couldn't live without his old slurry fork. <laughs> what is a slurry fork? It's a bit like a Jaws wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people just tune in just at that moment. To hear <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> So, final scores are Ian and Zoe have four, and Paul and Fergal have six. Well, well, well done, sir. Well done. Well done. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Zoe Lyons, Paul Merton and Fergal Sharkey. And I leave you with news that, arriving at the Dog and Duck, three drinkers seem unimpressed, as the barman says, this reminds me of the start of a joke. <laughs> There's further embarrassment for the British Museum as some ancient artefacts are left leaning up against a wall outside. <laughs> <laughs> and on a government visit to a factory in Birmingham, staff are told that anyone who gets stuck with a boring bloke should make the appropriate signal. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> We check out panel show Palooza, laughs and quizzy banter with the likes of Blame Game on iPlayer. It's a guide to avoiding life's awkward moments. Listen on sounds to hit comedy podcast. Help, I sexed my boss.